I'm in Iceland, but don't be fooled. Although it may look like it, the country isn't in fact made of ice, just like Poland isn't made of a large Teletubby. I'm here to see if I can discover the true story of the Icelandic flag. Granted, a rather elaborate way of doing it when I could have just sat at home and Googled it. First off, the bit I like to call, where on earth am I? Iceland is an island in the North Atlantic Ocean, and if you believe the TV series Vikings was visited by the shipbuilder Floki in 868 CE. Actually, the TV series wasn't far off with that, and it is said that it was the real Floki who gave the country its name. The flag follows the Nordic cross tradition in style and design and can be forgiven for being very reminiscent of my favourite of all Nordic flags, Norway. <clears throat> Let's see what this island and its flag has to offer. One thing that I have noticed here is that the national flag is rather hard to find at this time of year. I'm simply surrounded by empty flagpoles, but no matter, I'm determined to find one national flag flying while I'm here. But we're jumping ahead of ourselves and there's a good few hundred years to get through before we end up here. Between 930 and 1262, the country was the Icelandic Commonwealth with this rather stripy flag, also known as the Icelandic Free State, which is ironic as they pledged their fealty to the Norwegian king. This is when proper civilization really took hold of the island. This is followed by the King of Norway taking control between 1262 and 1397, where both Icelanders and Norwegians were given equal rights and therefore shared a common flag. That changed with the joining of the Kalmar Union, where Denmark, Sweden, Finland and Norway, and therefore Iceland, joined as one. Lots of interesting things happened here during this union, but it was eventually disbanded in 1537. At this stage, Denmark now owned Iceland, and therefore this frozen island flew the world's oldest flag. In 1809, the rather odd tale of Gorgon Gorgonson, a Dane who was a captain of a British ship, don't ask, arrived and decided to declare himself King of Iceland and introduced this fishy flag. Based on the perceived national colour of blue, it had three decapitated stock fishes in the Canton area. Fish because they were simply fishing these at the time. It is said that the locals found the dead fish rather humiliating and at the first opportunity replaced the flag with a falcon, a more traditional Icelandic symbol. The Icelandic royal namesake of the equalizer's Edward Woodward rule was short-lived and he was eventually exiled randomly to Tasmania. There's a bridge named after him with his head carved into the side. Use that in your next pub quiz. So the white falcon and this equally colourful background varied over the years. There was a whole thing about the Danes didn't want the falcon to have open wings as this might have symbolised the nation wanting to take flight and be seen as a metaphor of wanting independence. I think somebody was probably just overthinking things a bit. Okay, so now we're getting close to what we recognise today. On the 13th of March 1897, poet Einar Benediktsson published a journal stating that the falcon flag neither truly represented Iceland as a nation, nor did it follow the international pattern of a flag. I mean, he's right. Who would have an animal on the national flag? Okay, apart from Uganda or Sri Lanka. And Wales and Bhutan probably don't count because they're dragons and they don't really exist. And the same goes for Albania. And as for Mexico and Guatemala and Dominica and Papua New Guinea, well, they are birds. Okay, all right, it's too cold for this sort of thing. I'm to propose this simple white Nordic cross on the dark and blue this time but was dismissed by the Danish monarch due to its similarities with the Greek flag. That, and at a distance, it could be mistaken at sea as the Swedish flag. It was also almost identical to the flag of Shetland. 1914 saw this proposal rejected by Denmark. The Icelandic Prime Minister set up a committee to come up with a new flag. They fobbed off this task to the public to see what they could come up with. An overwhelming 46 entries came back, 35 of which were based on the Nordic Cross as the centrepiece. 13 of these 35 introduced red to the already agreed use of white and blue. And just when you thought our tale had ended, Denmark still didn't agree. And besides, most of Europe at this time was a little preoccupied with a great war to be worrying about flags. Things took a turn in November 1918 when it was agreed that the vessels could fly a local Icelandic flag and by the following month this design was the first officially flown at sea. Iceland finally gained full independence on the 17th of June 1944. 
And unlike many national flags, the colours are not steeped in history of revolutions and bloodshed for free of the oppressed. No, Iceland takes a much more lateral viewpoint. The white is the snow and ice that mostly covers the island. The red is the fires of volcanoes that litter the scenic views, as well as occasionally ground international travel, and the blue that represents the mountains. OK, that bit didn't work. Back to present day and my quest to find at least one flying flag, I did manage to find these flying outside some shops, but more excitingly... But they do have the flag on the number plate! <laughs> Told you I'd find one. And with that, my quest is complete. That said, while the current flag is relatively new considering the country's history, in 2014 there was some interest in the redesign. The symbolism of the flag is less authentically representative of Iceland and its people, the Nordic cross being a Christian symbol, the heritage there has started to fall by the wayside, making it less representative of a modern technological new age. So who knows, instead of this flag being the end of the story, it might be a matter of the time before it becomes just another chapter in its ever-changing, ever-evolving vexillological history. <laughs>